Hey everyone, welcome to this new episode of Inspire Africa with me, Jerry Fusaya Bambi. Coming up, the story of the Read in the Sahel project in Cameroon, providing books to schools in disadvantaged areas. And the Congolese man in Goma producing biodegradable paper bags as a means to tackle environmental pollution. And later, we speak about the manufacturing and fabrication industry with the young award-winning Nigerian engineer, Jerry Isaac Malu. This is Inspire Africa. Let us start off in Cameroon with the Read in the Sile project. An initiative of David Wanidam, the project uses mobile tricycles to take books to schools, universities, and disadvantaged areas. Let's take a look. In the headquarters of the association Reading Sahel in northern Cameroon, books are stored in boxes. In just a few minutes, they will begin a journey across the city of Marwa, where students and young readers are waiting for them. The mobile library project initiated by the association does a great service to the country people. They had a lot of difficulties and little access to books, and even worse in a region where there is no library. It was not easy. So to allow them to familiarize themselves with the documentation, it was important for us to go towards the readers rather than waiting for them to come to us. So that's the objective. When the mobile library finally arrives, students can pick as many books as they want. It was a first for me. To see a traveling library actually reach us thanks to a car is totally new. It enables us to access a large number of books and documents. Despite a population of approximately one million inhabitants, libraries are rare in Mara and its surroundings. When David Wanadam noticed this, he abandoned his journalist and aid worker careers. What motivated me was the state of the municipal library in Marua and the lack of access to books and information in general. We do not have a library. The only library available to young people and students plus researchers in the city is the internet. However, the internet is not available throughout the region. Thanks to vehicles like this, the Muta Andal initiative carries books and stops at schools and universities in unprivileged towns. We had a rough start, certainly because of COVID, but we understand this. We could not do some international book orders, for example, but also we could not gather many people in one place. So today there is a growing success on the project. More and more people are asking us for help. Since 2018, hundreds of children and students have read books distributed by the Muta Under the Initiative. And from Cameroon, we head now to Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where we've got Jeremy and his colleagues who are providing a biodegradable solution to environmental pollution. We'll take a look at that, and I'll be in the studios with you to continue the show. In Goma DRC, a anti single use plastic revolution is underway. It is in the western city of the Democratic Republic of Congo that CEO Jeremy Kazingufu has launched paper bags. The business produces sustainable paper packaging solutions. Thanks to this machine and a secret formula, every day around 100 biodegradable bags are produced here. The business idea has proven successful five years after the launch of the company. We wanted to start a production of some things which could replace bags. And normally we had noticed the packaging has many diversifications. Reasons for which we set ourselves the objectives to produce paper packaging. That means that we proposed biodegradable packaging. So, a very diversified range of papers. 
The paperback CEO is not the only one happy with the alternative. Many Goma residents like Rosine Shamirimbi have made the habit of using biodegradable bags. Thanks to this sustainable paper package, I can carry many things. Instead of using single-use plastic bags, I use these. Since they decay naturally, it protects the environment. If the green packaging market is still in its infancy, existing legislation already prohibits the production or the import of films and other plastic bags. However, old habits die hard. That is why Emmanuel Kamenzi, another resident, has chosen to support the initiative. For us, this provides some relief. Biodegradable packaging will help us to protect the environment, and beyond that, it will help us to keep the city clean. The journey to clean streets may be long, but sustainable paper bags could be the small step that will lead to a giant leap in the battle against plastic pollution in the DRC. Now, if you're just joining us, you are watching Inspire Africa with me, Jerry Fisaya Bambi. Nigerian fabrication engineer and entrepreneur Jerry Isaac Malo returns to the country after studies in the UK. He started Benny Technologies and manufactured Nigeria's first fiberglass sports car. Most recently, it was announced the 2022 winner of the Future Awards Prize for Entrepreneurship. And he joins me now from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. Welcome to the program, Jerry, and congratulations on your award. Thank you very much. Uh, to begin with, have you always wanted to be a fabrication engineer? Um, yeah, I think um, since I was five years old, I've been having the quest of being a team leader in an automotive industry. Um, so I, at that age, I didn't know much. I didn't know what part I needed to take to attain that. All I knew was I found happiness doing anything around cars. And growing up as kids, growing up in the village, we always made toy cars, making use of um, waste materials from scrap metals and other things. I made a first toy car that was using a remote, a wire connected remote, and I kept feeding that passion at secondary school. I started representing um, the school in different science competitions. So in doing all that, I kept meeting like minds. I, I got more exposed. I kept learning online. And uh, after secondary school, I was fortunate to study in UK. You left the UK, you went back to, to Nigeria. What were the options for you? Uh, well, I had the option of staying back in UK. I, I, I lost happiness along the way. Whenever I go to work, I just keep um, reminding myself, when we keep staying there, we keep developing their countries. Who then develop ours? That was the question that kept popping up to my mind. So yeah, I just made up my mind. I was coming back. There was no support. There was no acceptance from my family. It was just me that knew my dream. So um, I just came back and went right into it. Great. And when you got back, you started Benny Technologies. And how long did it take you to manufacture the sports car? OK, um, coming back, I didn't go straight into cars. I went into agro machineries first. And the first was the need to mechanize agricultural processing in Nigeria and beyond. And the second was the need to create jobs among teenagers and youth. Um, we have thousands of graduates yearly, but we don't have jobs for them. So I just gathered a few people that had interest around me. And after sharing, the first sample that came out was Benny Puri. And it took us um, about 30 working days to put that together. Now, as an entrepreneur and a fabrication engineer, what would you consider to be the most essential thing? I think it's self-motivation. Um, you keep building such kind of business or such kind of system in Africa it's very difficult. We have little or no systems that encourage things like that. You keep coming across challenges, stumbling blocks, and if you're not self-motivated, there's no one around that will motivate you to do more. So you just have to keep pushing yourself. You just have to delete giving up from your mind. So what are the new projects you're working on? The focus has just been on the two major arms. Benny Agro, focusing on the um, production of agro machines, which is what we do every day. I'm just trying to make agricultural process simpler and easier, faster, saving you more costs um, and you, as you making more earnings from your farming process. And the other arm is Benio Automobile, just focusing, designing 
and just targeting the nearest future where we'll be ready to build cars for the roads. Jerry, Isaac Malo, I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me too. And it's on that note that we've come to the end of this episode of Inspire Africa. My name is Jerry Fisayabambi. You can see the show again by going to africannews.com, the program section where you'd find Inspire Africa. I'm leaving you with some of the images that caught our attention on social media. I'll see you some other time. Bye. From Jonas Tadese, the picture of a man who claims to have traveled 40 days by foot in his four-month journey from Saudi Arabia to Ethiopia. And taken from Gambia's at Tall Black Ben, this picture says, this is what an exquisite black queen looks like. Plus, in Bissau Velo, Guinea-Bissau, we find Sunset Checkers, a photo by Richie Shyrock.